Today we'll be doing a little show and tell. Hi, I'm Michael Douglas and welcome to this edition of Dr. Pundit, where I don't talk about medicine, I talk about music. And on this edition of the show, we'll be talking about show and tell a song by Al Wilson that topped the pop charts in January of 1974. And one of the things that keeps me going back to this song and wonderment and fascination, I suppose, is the fact that it did so well on the pop charts and relatively not as well on the soul charts as they were called at the time. Now, because of this, this is the beginning of an occasional series that I'll be doing on this channel, Dr. Pundit, highlighting R&B songs, in this case, soul songs that should have done better on their respective charts, the R&B charts, soul charts, than they did on the pop charts. And this particular song hit number one in January of 1974. It was released in late 1973 and flew up the pop charts, hitting number one, like I said, staying there for a week, but number one nonetheless. On the R&B singles chart, at that time, Billboard magazine called it the Hot Soul Singles Chart. The song only peaked at number 10. It was a top 10 soul hit, I guess, but it never went any higher. And I've always found that crazy because if you listen to this song, it's dripping with soul. It's a song that is played on old school stations. It's played on Motown stations. It's played on obviously 70s stations because it was a number one pop hit, but it only hit number 10. And it's a song, in my opinion, showed the maturation of soul production, R&B production, maturing even from a few years earlier. By the early 1970s, R&B production values were really advancing at a rapid rate. And you could credit producers like Gamble and Huff, the Philadelphia Sound, as being at the top of this movement and they were such an inspiration for a lot of the hits to follow in the mid to late 70s and dare say I say the development of disco uh, toward that time and one can easily hear that sound improving I guess or advancing by just listening to soul songs from the late 60s say 1967 to the early 1970s 71 72 uh, a lot of horns a lot of percussion and as a late 60s gave way to the early 70s, we were seeing a lot more emphasis on bass and vocals and how that tied into to the way a song was delivered. And this was one of the first songs, in my opinion, that really exemplified that trend. The song uh, Show and Tell by Al Wilson is emblematic in a lot of reasons. Of course, that, that chart nerd reason I was telling you about at the beginning of the show, but it's much more than that. To me, it represented a watershed moment in the development of R&B music, just as so many other styles in its particular era were also developing. A lot of music critics like to talk about the early 70s as the development of what we now know, or what we now refer to as the first generation of classic rock. So groups like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, the uh, late progression of Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac and the Fleetwood Mac, the Rolling Stones, you know, I, Elton John, the, this fertile period from 1971 to 1975 was just incredible in terms of all genres of music maturing, like I said at the time, and soul music, R&B music, was definitely a part of that. And this song, I feel, was right in the middle of it. And that's why it means a lot to me every time I hear it. Yes, the chart stat is interesting in its own right, but at the end of the day, when you hear the song, that's what matters. And if you think of it in the context of the maturation of pop music in general, um, then maybe it's no secret to why it did better on the pop charts than on the R&B singles chart or the soul chart at the time. It's a plain, great R&B song. A little bit history here. It was actually given to Johnny Mathis, who recorded it in 1972, uh, but it didn't go anywhere because I think in the wrong hands, so to speak, this is a mostly spare sounding soul track and it really needed uh, a meatier, greasier, for lack of a better term, um, soul 
uh, a bass voice to really bring it out. And that's what Al Wilson did. Um, what makes that chart statistic even more startling is that he would never make it close to the top 10 of the pop charts anymore. It's as if this song was destined to hit number one for the reasons I outlined above, I guess. Sadly, Al Wilson passed away in 2008 from kidney failure, I think it was. But this song and its parent album live on. And it's a fantastic testament to how soul music developed into modern day R&B. Uh, just a fantastic song on so many fronts. And I urge you to listen to it. If you like what you see here on Dr. Pundit, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out to bring you the content that you want to see. It helps you out. Uh, it increases its availability so that YouTube puts it out there so that many more people can see it. So please take a moment to do those things. And I'm really excited about an upcoming episode, probably the next episode, where I do my first listicle, where I talk about a top 10 list of some sort. And I'm still trying to figure out what that is, but uh, it should be good. So stick around for that. And as the late, great Barry White used to say, let the music play. Music